This is uh, part three, I believe, of the uh, tutorials for completing Word project number one. And uh, in the previous one, where we stopped was we completed step number eight, where we bolded this uh, Tuesdays at noon. And now we're up to step number nine, which has an A and a B. They want us to, uh, to format the paragraphs describing the five steps class as follows, to match the formatting of the other class descriptions. First of all, to apply bullets to the uh, three paragraphs beginning with improve your heart and weekly gross, uh, groceries list. So there are three paragraphs. Each one of them is one line, but they're still paragraphs. And I highlight them. Again, notice that for some reason it works better for me. I highlight from the end and drag back to the beginning. Then to turn this into a bullet list, also known as an unordered list, in the Home tab, right here, Bullets. Just one click. And it takes everywhere that there's a line break and turns it into a bullet. The second thing they want me to do, and this was, um, so this was 9A, done, is to increase the indent of the second and the third bulleted paragraphs, uh, take five easy to follow, and weekly groceries. So I'm going to highlight only the second and the third one, and then increasing indent is right here. This is to decrease and this is to increase. And I increase the indent. And by doing so, it makes it look like these two are nested inside this one. Like this is like the main one and these are the two children of it. One thing I will do in this, um, in a case like this, this is a good example where I'm thinking that, you know, I did exactly what they want me to do, but I'm not sure, is to go back to the instructions and on the instructions, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's always a screenshot of the way it should look, the way they want it to look. And here it is. See, it looks exactly like mine. Uh, automatically, the you know the sub bullets get you know like this look and so on. Um, cool. So I know I've done steps uh, nine A and B the way they want me to which takes me to step number 10. At the end of the paragraph, for more information, type this email and press spacebar to convert the text into a hyperlink. Hyperlink simply means something you can click on and it takes you to it, uh, like a web address or an email and so on. So at the end of the paragraph, after the word contact, wellness at crest.sengage.com. I hope I can remember that. So contact. I make sure that there's a space. Wellness at Chris dot Sengage dot com. Uh, very important to pay attention to spelling because some of them are names that we're not sure how to spell. And right now, all I have to do is hit my space bar once and it turns it into a link. Save. If I uh, got the spelling wrong, believe me, it'll tell me it when I submit it. But I think I got it right. Let's look at the instructions. Wellness at Kretzengage.com. Yep, let's look at them side by side. Yep, looks right to me. Cool, so I can call step number 10. Done. 11, separate the top and the bottom parts of the flyer as opens. Add a top border. This is one of the tricky ones. Um, add a top border to the paragraph for more information and change the color of the border to Aqua Accent 4. Now, let me share my experience with you. It's a little buggy. And the way you go around this bug, it's a bug in the software, is to do it in the opposite order. First, to change the color of the border to Aqua Accent 4, and then to add a top border. So how do I do this? First of all, I find the paragraph for more information, which is this one. And there's no need to highlight the whole paragraph. I just click just before the first letter, which is F. Then right here in the home is the borders. And I will click this uh, 
this is for changing everything about borders and i will click and go to all the way down to borders and shading and the first thing i will do is under borders instead of color automatic i will choose this aqua color which i think is this one okay let me make sure on the uh, instructions aqua accent four eighth column first row yep that's the one again just to make sure i clicked on the side you know just to the left of the paragraph no need to highlight all of it i went to borders and shading and instead of color automatic i did aqua then i will go to here and ask for a top border and this way it gave me a top border that is a top border and aqua and so on uh, sometimes if you do it in the order they ask you to do it becomes a black border and it's really hard to change it into um into aqua so in this case i did the steps a little you know i did b and then i did a but it worked Again, everything I'm showing you, there are steps in the tutorials to show you how to do this. Step number 12, change the weight, uh, so, sorry, sorry, change the height of the weights in athletics shoes, shoes picture to one inch to balance the page. So there's a picture here, and right now it's on page two, and I'm going to click it. As we did in the previous picture, it shows us, as soon as I click on the picture, it makes available a new tab called picture format this tab is not here most of the time if i click on something else it's gone but when i click on a picture just one click picture format appears and i can click on it and at the very far right there's a place for height and width i can use the steps to go down to one inch or just type one whatever is easier Notice because they are locked to each other, when I change the height to one inch, it automatically changes the width proportionately. So there's no need to type anything here as long as this check lock aspect ratio is on. So by changing the height, it also changes the width uh, proportionately. Save. Back to the instructions. Again, they want us to change the height to one inch and let the width fall to whatever is you know is proportionate um now just like we had an hyperlink now they want us to remove a hyperlink from crest health and wellness program again a hyperlink means that if someone reads this document and clicks on it it's supposed to take them to a website but they want me to remove it um below the picture there's right now a link here it is and they don't want it to be a link so how do we remove a link we highlight don't want to remove the text, just don't want it to be a link anymore. Right click with my mouse and a menu drops and there's hyperlink. On Windows, it's going to look a little different and it might actually have a command on this main menu called remove hyperlink. On Mac, it's a sub menu, but in any case, it's by right clicking on the text, you will find it. Remove hyperlink and it becomes regular text. Save. And in the instructions, that was step number 12, or actually it was step number 13. We got three mo more to go. Italicize the text cell from the word cell to the end of the number. Italicize this by clicking I. That was an easy step. Save. And... Let's go back to the instructions to see what else we need to do. Step number 14 was to italicize. We've done that. Delete the par last paragraph in the document, including the picture of a Crest logo to make the flyer content fit on one page. So there's this picture. They want me to delete it. And as soon as I do that, it should fit into one page. If it doesn't fit into one page, that means that there might be some extra lines here. Or more likely, if that doesn't happen, go back to 
layout and make sure that you did the very first things that we needed to do, which is orientation portrait and margins narrow. If the margins were normal, which means bigger, see how it doesn't fit into one page? But if the margins are narrow, it's tighter and it makes it fit into one page. Good. Save. Almost done. Window. Instructions. And we did number 15. Last but not least is to check the spelling and grammar of the document to identify and correct any spelling errors. And there's two ways to do that. I can either look through the document and see if there's any questionable words. And questionable words are going to have this squiggly red line underneath them. Uh, or I can go to review. And right here, there's spelling and grammar. So I will do, you know, I'll check the whole document just in case there's something else hiding. I click. And it says, hey, the word commitment is spelled wrong. Suggestions, do you want to spell it this way? I will change. Spelling and grammar check is complete. What does that mean? That there was only one word to change. By the way, if I undo, edit, undo spelling change, I could have done the same thing by right clicking on the word and choosing the suggestion commitment. And then if the red line disappears, that means it's spelled correctly. Save. And that really is the end of this. In the next part, part four, I will go over submitting the document. But for right now, I can I think I can go to my instructions and mark it as done. You know what? Since it's pretty easy, let me uh, continue this video. Let's see if we can um, submit using this. So if I'm ready to submit and I went through all the steps and I think I did everything right, uh, I'm going to save one last time. I'm pretty sure I know where it's saved. It's in the downloads folder of my computer. You might may save it anywhere you want. But right now, if I go to downloads, here it is. Make sure it's the underscore two. It's in my downloads folder. And I can go back to my browser. You know what? I will do this in a different um, video because it takes logging in. 